Hello, dear viewer. If you're wondering why I'm wearing these bandages, it's because I got jumped a couple of days ago. It was a very brutal process, but since I've lived in only three since my dark PNG physique... Well, one, I don't need the bandages, so, uh... And two, I can review Bowser vs. Eggman. Which is what got me sent to the hospital to begin with, so this is a bad idea. Luckily for me, I really love bad ideas, so the match of itself, everyone knows the hell and back. Simply for the rivalry that these gaming franchises had. In terms of hype, I was very excited for this episode upon reveal, and did it live up to the hype? Well, despite what my reaction video would suggest in my moments, which I'll be expanding on later, I really love this episode. In fact, it's my favorite episode of the show, if you ignore... They gave Bowser the army, I'm not, nah, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced. Bowser does not win army, that's just it. Everything that Muncher said. So yeah, obviously this is a 10 out of 10. Now, I'm gonna go into a lot of things with this episode, so I'm gonna go and jump into the review as quickly as possible to get everything across as soon as I can. The analysis does what you should expect. The editing is as amazing as always, especially with these new renamed cars that appear at the beginning of the analysis when introducing the character that they're going to be looking more into. This analysis also has interesting shots focusing on particular text blurbs and story moments that help give more mm, to a particular part of their arsenal or their backstory. This is usually something Death Battle does well, but I wanted to bring it up here since this is when I noticed it shines very well with the current episode. Also, this analysis is very up to date, given that they use footage from both Mario Party Jamboree and Sonic X Shadow Generations. That goes to show just how much effort that was made into making this video, especially since Boot 6 name is on the Mario Party footage, which means that this is really recent. And naturally, as someone who knows a lot about these characters, I got a kick about hearing everything that these characters have at their disposal, even if it did mean that I had to cover Paper Mario being canon. Curse the entire land of everything, but there's nothing I can do. If Miyamoto said it, it's likely true, so, yeah. Also, there's a good job at going into the armies in as much detail as possible, including the generals of Bowser Jr., Kamek, and King Boo, as well as Sage, Metal Sonic, and Infinite, or as I like to call them, the child, the strongest, and the fraud. Bowser that Sonic gets, still gets murdered by him, and his strongest speed comes from a mistranslation. Also, we never see it in the game over at the It also goes how, despite them being evil, both are still caring for their generals, especially in Bowser's case since he actually cares for his whole army, whilst Eggman just tosses everyone aside unless they do something to give praise, with the exception of Sage. Really, this is a very good covering of the characters and... Why does Bowser have the pure hearts? This is a very good covering of the characters and does everything uh, as an analysis should. It has really decent editing that highlights particular things, it gives as much detail on something as possible, and it helps me give a fair understanding of what these characters could do if I didn't know these characters at all. Overall, this just showcases the characters that I love really well. I could no doubt, let's go, I love this fight! So, the setup was pretty hyped up by the anime of this fight, Moro, and honestly, I can kinda see why. The setup is pretty funny, as Eggman catfishes Bowser into a forced marriage, before pulling the veil and announcing he's taking over the Mushroom Kingdom to create Eggman Land 2. Bowser obviously takes this as a joke, and then, oh, 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 battle of bear ships. But with the fight starting, let's begin with Game Over is my new favorite track. I don't want to hear it. The song is menacing as hell, and overall really suits the feel of these characters with the power of a really awesome rock anthem. This is brother amped by the lyrics which do a very good job at representing the characters. First with Bowser. And also with Eggman. Obviously, with both at the same time shown in two separate cases.
God, this track is so good. It was worth the wait of a slightly longer delay time. I would really recommend a listen to this song. It is way too good for its own merits. Also, I only learned this after scripting this video, but apparently the song by itself got to trending on YouTube. So, congratulations to Brandon Yates for that wondrous occasion. And to no one's surprise, the animation for this fight... Mmm, it's so goddamn good and suits the baller track so well! Everything here is well drawn, even the more complicated stuff like Edragoon and Fury Bowser. We even get cool nods in the animation, such as this frame of Bowser entering his shell being his iconic meme face from Hotel Mario. The animation for all that's going on is so interesting, as well as expansive, and captures the general numbers of the fight very well, especially as things escalate to stuff like Neo Metal Sonic and the aforementioned Fury Bowser. Speaking of Bowser, since he could talk in the episode, let's talk about character portrayal. Bowser was portrayed very well, keeping his arrogance and abrasive nature, as well as adding in him caring for his troops. Not only did Bowser use his dark magic to keep the smaller troops alive during infinite gravity manipulation, but Bowser also jumped in front of a massive laser to protect his troops. That is dedication. With Bowser's absolute amazing MVP behavior, Eggman is no different when it comes to clean characterization. He still keeps the egomaniac self as well as him caring for his troops when given, which is especially clear before his death with this concerned look. Since the master block showing up means Eggman has no idea if Sage is safe, which is a really good detail to add in since Eggman and Sage's dynamic is what really elevates Frontiers for me. Metal Sonic is the only other character to mention here, because this dude nearly wiped out all of Bowser's generals besides Junior, even though he was very close to. Sure, he was temporarily locked out, but remind me who turned Eggman's gun into cardboard. Exactly. Also, turning into Neo and nearly killing someone over a game of chance time is low-key the funniest thing ever. I have not seen something so relatable since watching me. Home run! Also, uh, metal thumbs up. I think it's cutely cool. The only other general that I could mention here is Infinite, which he didn't do much. To be fair, that does line up with forces, so fair. And I don't think I have anything else to talk about that wouldn't be me repeating myself. So, let me talk about the best part of the episode, and that is the ending of the fight. I'll be starting specifically where B Fury Bowser enters the battle, because, uh... No! COME ON! <laughs> LET'S GO! <laughs> yeah, that's the most hyped I was, as you can tell from my lovely reaction. Starting with the iconic Showtime line, Fury Bowser comes out and already makes it even against the Death Egg robots. Sage and Metal both showcase of protecting their father, which is followed by Kamek stopping Sage's onslaught protecting Bowser. Only for Bell to break through the pipes and knock Kamek to Kingdom Come. Then, Metal Sonic made a very fail error. Attacking Shadow Mario, aka Junior. Leading to the best light of the episode with no contest. How dare you keep your hands off my- <laughs> Eggman's plan is falling apart in front of him as he sends Sage to the Death Egg to use his final weapon, the Final Egg Blaster, which fires upon the planet as Eggman and the rest of the troops flee. However, Bowser stays behind and attacks the blast head-on for his troops. As Eggman thinks he's won, Dry Bowser shows up, and now Eggman has no way out. Eggman does try to call for Sage to get another shot off, however the Death Egg is replaced by a block. Concerning Eggman for Sage's safety, before he gets being pulled in by Bowser's suck move. That sounds very wrong. Eggman tries the jetpack, but fails. Then, he tries the gun, which he turns into cardboard. Eggman is then black flashed into the question mark block, which is a neat call by the Super Mario 64 with this line right here. So long, Doctor! Which then explodes and rains coins. God, what an ending. It's well animated, genuinely really hype, has amazing character moments, and insane action all throughout. Now, the next time. Please don't make me do the conclusion, I already survived one JJK jumping already. Okay, fine, I'll go to the- Oh god. Now, the conclusion is flawed. I gave it away from this line in my reaction. No, no, I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced. Uh, no. My ass got jumped. No, really. I got jumped. Hard. Granted, I just assumed that this wouldn't be a big deal, since reaction videos are almost always done in the heat of the moment, 
and salt would be no exception. But since I have given this an actual section in my video, this backfired on me hard. So, what did I mean by this? Well, let's go into as much detail as I can without waffling. Physical stats. Comparing the final egg blast to destroy mobile stars to Yoshi's raven feet, we did just a one, is kinda dumb. But besides that, I don't got a complaint here. Powers are similar across each case, and male virus is, is an item that I will not be giving Eggman because Bowser does fight out counter it. Whether it's with the sheer willpower of his minions, the true form paid for Mario RPG, or as for the alternate outcome, the Star Rod. So I'll ignore that for now as well. Intelligence, yeah, no shit, this goes to Eggman. Who is disagreeing with this? Bowser is smart, but Eggman is almost never getting outsmarted. Trump cards really depend on higher ends. And I have stated multiple times that the Dreamstone higher ends are just not good. The Dreamstone was in one game, did absolutely nothing whatsoever besides an apparent island feat. And compared with the Wonder Flower to the Fans Ruby is okay, but because the Wonder Flower was only in one game, it's not really known what it can do yet. And also, Bowser saying the universe is his captive audience is also something I will take with a grain of salt since I think that's what he's just saying because of like, he, he wants to take over the universe. That's the problem that I have with the conclusion as a whole, so I'm getting it out of the way right now. And despite Chaos Emeralds being compared to stars, the main reason that I think that these are a bit different is because while the stars are more plentiful, their powers are finite. Whereas the Chaos Emeralds have been stated multiple times to have unlimited power. So either way, I just think the Chaos Emeralds are stronger just because of that stat alone. And also, uh, in case it isn't obvious, I don't like giving Bowser the pure hearts. And armies. Great. So I mentioned, oh, Eggman wins armies, this is wrong. And because of my sheer emotional flip, I didn't go into why. So without all the... Dear Christ. The reason they gave Bowser to win the army is because of loyalty and chemistry and stage having much to do, as well as Kamek's chance time. As well as Bowser and Go having the power as Mario. <gasps> I'll be as quick as possible, I swear. Chemistry and teamwork isn't a substitute for power. Just because you can better coordinate things does not mean you're stronger. Metal Sonic and Sage are still stronger than Bowser's army, excluding the Cooper himself. Strength is better and more viable than teamwork. Saying Sage is nearly useless without the Haggy ability is a lie. She can steal some of the Titans from Frontiers and command them to attack Bowser. Which the conclusion doesn't show an alternate ending for, so I don't know why that's not mentioned. Sage's calculations were about the end specifically. The reason she said something was impossible was because of Eggman programming her to not think of a solution where they teamed up with Sonic, which she eventually gave in to at the end of Frontiers which is a different reason that the team gave her in the conclusion. Bowser's minions getting every IO changes absolutely nothing, because the minions who get those power-ups are the small fries who a lot of Eggman's army could already deal with. Adding a power-up does not change that. Kevin Shine's time is unavoidable though, that's true. Again, I was salty in the reaction, and that's because it was heat of the moment. The hype was at all-time high with my friend group. And also, in case the amount of people didn't give it away, I outright could not hear the conclusion the first time. My thoughts and feelings came from a rewatch that I did after the VC party. I do apologize if the reaction made me come across as arrogant, that was not my intention whatsoever. I was blinded by the sheer emotions that the episode gave me and I could not think straight. Even if you disagree with me, which I'm sure some of you will, I just wanted to make this section so that you could understand my thought process. And to let me finish this tirade, let me remind people Salt is a completely normal emotion. It's normal, but annoying, and I will stand by that until I get sent to the grave for my sins against humanity. None of us wanted to debug the episode over its conclusion. It's just a case of us disagreeing with it. Again, the salt is annoying, but that doesn't mean me and my friend group should be harassed over our emotions being at the highest. We were screaming during the episode out of the hype that we had, and that should be enough to tell you that I already led the episode. In the army section, people were saying, did you listen to the conclusion? Well, I couldn't have! We were yapping about the egg carrier too! What could I have done to avoid that? Now, I'll admit, I was not perfect in that situation. I did say Edgar Bellman army end all, kind of like an arrogant Mr. Matt. That's because, well, at the time, I thought it was true. And, as I stated before, I could not hear the conclusion. A fair chunk of us yapped over it, and I don't think I was one of them at all. Besides the arrogant comments, me mentioning the Egg Carrier 2, and right after it went to Bowser, that's the only time where I ever said a thing during that conclusion. 
why am I being blamed for something I didn't even do that much? I rewatched the episode to get my thoughts set, which is how I came to add all these opinions in during the scripting of this video. The review is for an in-depth analysis of the episode. The reaction is just the first thoughts. Expecting me to create an in-depth review of an episode I just watched is dumb. That's not humanly possible. And that's the problem with most of the comments that I got during that video. Most people who left those comments or just don't understand how human works, and I will stick by that. Oh, and in the ending of said episode, when it was in the reaction video, someone said that I don't know if they review the conclusion, but the episode was still amazing, which I agreed with. Are we just beginning that people could disagree with the consensus? But yeah, with my rant about my friend's horrid mistreatment aside, the conclusion is positive of the good editing and in-depth reasons, which, as I said, I disagree with a bit, but I'm glad they went into as much detail as possible. Now, for next time. Amazing episode. Oh, agreed, oh, agreed, really agreed. Really oh, next time. Oh, next time, next time, next time. What's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? Oh, fuck off! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Can you tell that I don't like Among Us vs. Ball, guys? I never saw the appeal in this matchup. I never found it funny, nor did I think it needed to come back after 2020. It should really go to tell you that the only time I had a positive reaction was the fact that my reaction of rage was a reaction that I didn't even know I could do. Among Us vs. Ball guys get announced and I'm acting like I found out I was adopted, I will admit. That, 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 that reaction is funny, I'm just saying. But, uh, I don't know what else I could say. I didn't find the matchup funny, and I don't like it. So that's just end of. Obviously, there is a prediction show for you to get a grasp on who I think wins. But besides that, what else is there for me to say without being redundant? Overall, though, this episode is the best of the show. Even though a friend can be flawed, at the end of the day, that is objective. And it could also lead me to get jumped into oblivion. I haven't financially recovered since. But, uh, I'm gonna pay this hospital bill. Bye-bye.